Hey, what's up? This is uh, Jeremiah, paintingcourse.com, and today we're gonna we're gonna talk about it's uh, lesson lesson twelve, and we're finally finally getting into color. So the first things first, uh, you got to know how to buy your paints. So f first thing is when you look at your paint. See how it's got that box right there at the end of those stars, that black box? That means that the color's opaque. And you only want to be buying opaque colors because when you're starting off painting and if you're using a lot of transparent colors, your, your paintings are going to look really streaky. So here's another one. See it's got all the stars there and then there's just the, uh, the little box. When the box is all the way black, that means it's opaque. This one has a triangle. See? Box half full, that means semi-transparent. It's still alright. And then my red also is semi-transparent. But um, you just, you, semi-transparent's okay, but you don't want totally transparent colors. Second thing, we're going to set up our palette. I'm going to show you how to set up a palette really quick. If you're wondering which colors to get, <clears throat> the colors that you should have are cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red medium, and then here's actually cerulean blue, which is pretty good, and uh, it's not too expensive, and it's opaque. Ultramarine blue is really, really transparent. And then titanium white is the white that you want. All right. So let's just go through setting it. We're going to set up the palette really quick. I go from darkest to lightest. So I put my blue up first. Then I put my red up. Yippee. And then put in your yeller. Old yeller. And then a little white. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. It's just in a couple of days. Okay, so now we've got our we've got our palette set up. The I'm gonna just be painting a lot on the palette. I'll probably just grab some paper as well for a couple other things. But I'm, but for most of this, I'm just gonna paint on the palette just because it's easier. Um, oh yeah, the second thing, brushes. See, see what type of brush I got? Don't, just don't go crazy about brushes. They're not a big deal. This is a filbert, that means the edges are rounded. And then here I've got a flat. Okay? That's all you want now. Big, fat brushes. You're just starting to paint, so all you're using is big brushes. Don't, don't worry about these little details and all this crap. You know, you can jump off that bridge when you come to it. <clears throat> so, first things first. We're going to do, uh, do a basic color wheel here to start things off. And the habit you want to get into already is that always mix on your palette first. Mix everything on your palette. So, color wheel. Nice red to start things off. Always, you know, just get in the habit. You gotta, you gotta wash your brush every time you use it. Sorry, there's no trick. Um, then we got a yellow. See, I already got a little bit of that red in there. And the yellow doesn't really show up too well because this cardboard color. So I'm just gonna brighten it up myself here a little bit. It's a little bit of white. Alright, good enough. A couple little streaks right in there, but we can live with it. And so what are these colors? These these colors here are called the primary colors. And they're primary colors because they're the colors out of which you mix everything else. That's why this is this is all the colors you need for your palette. 
and then the blue. Pretty easy. This is kind of a, a wonky looking wonky looking uh, color wheel, but you know, the idea of this is just to get your feet wet, you know? So, primary colors, red, yellow, blue. What happens when we mix two of these colors together? Well, then we get what's called a secondary color. So we take a little bit of blue, take a little bit of red, and we get violet. Now, as you notice again, this violet is super, super dark. Probably looks black. So we're just going to take this up a little bit just so that we can really see what we're working with. And this will give us a little bit easier violet color. And it could use a little bit more blue, but does the job nonetheless. Alright, cool. So we got our little violet going. And that violet is called a secondary color because it took two primary colors to make it. Just keep going around the, uh, around the bend here. Make it green. That would be another secondary color. And the third secondary color will be an orange. It's always good to use a little bit more yellow than you think you need because yellow is generally a really weak color. Unless it's a, a good cadmium pigment, yellow tends to be really transparent and kind of obnoxious. That's why you gotta get the good toxic uh, cadmium colors. They work a lot better, but they're a lot more expensive. And I, I only have cadmiums for oil paint, but for acrylics, I don't spend as much. So here we've, here we've got our yellow, our red, and our blue primary colors, secondary colors, orange, violet, green. Cool, so this makes up our basic little color wheel. So why is this color wheel important though? Well the things that um, <clears throat> control intensity and value are based off this basic little color wheel here. So the second thing we have is something called complementary colors. And a complementary color is blue and orange, yellow and violet, red and green. So what does a compl complementary color mean? It means that it's opposite the color wheel. Okay opposite. That's it. Complementary color is the color opposite it on, on the color wheel. Um, a really easy demonstration of when you get two very very close colors that are about the same value and they're complementary colors such as a, a blue and an orange and you put them together you'll get kind of a vibration. You know they, they tend to be really really awful um, electric color combinations. But they're, they're really helpful because they give us the ability to control something called intensity. Now if you look at the intensity of this red and this yellow, every one of these colors has an intensity, but so far this red is the most intense, I would say, this red and this yellow. So what we want to do when we're painting the real world is we want to take down the intensity of the colors. We don't want to just use the colors that we have straight out of the tube because that's not how we see the real world. There's shadows on things, you know, there's, you know, light bouncing off of walls that changes colors and gets greens into reds. And so when you're painting, you always want to take down the intensity of most all of your colors. Certainly all your shadow colors are going to be low intensity colors. So, let's jump into the first one right now. Uh, let's do red. We'll start with red, right? And this is assignment number 21, I believe. Wherever it is. Assignment 21, yeah. So you're going to make eight separate 
scales like this one here, okay? So you start with red, and then we're going to make this a s intensity scale. That means we're going to start with the most intense red, and then we're going to go down in intensity, okay? So how do we make this less intense? We add green to it, right? So I don't even really need to uh, clean my brush, because it's going back into that red art anyway. But let's just get a big pile of green here, right? So how do we mix a lower intensity red? We can't just plop that green down, so we gotta get another blob of red again. And then we're just gonna add a little bit of this green to it. That's it. See how that takes down the intensity of the color? Makes it a little bit more purple. Also controls the value. You'll notice, you'll notice I don't have any black here either because painters don't, don't use black, you know, generally. Most painters don't use black because black makes, makes your colors start to, to get a little bit chalky. Like it's okay to add some black to like a violet or a blue, but a lot of other colors it, it kind of makes them look chalky and especially if you add white to them, they'll, they'll just get really chalky and look really fake. So let's keep taking this um, red down here, add a little bit more, add a little bit deeper, yeah, a little bit darker there. And we can just keep adding this green to this red, making it darker and darker, right? And then the ultimate would be, see, we don't want to go too green. We want to keep it, we want to keep that dark violet color. Let me change it a little bit bluer. And there we've got the deepest, right? So what did I do right here? I, I started with the red, and by adding green to this red, I not only diminished the intensity of the red, but I created a value scale. See how that worked? Now, if we want to make a value scale in the other direction, so, so the first thing is you're going to make eight strips of these. You're going to make one of each, of each color. So you're going to start with blue, then you're going to add orange to your blue, and you're going to see how your blue changes intensity and in value. So which brings us to our second thing, which is the value of color. But every one of these colors also has a, has a value, right? And I'll switch this to black and white. That's what I meant to say a second ago. Um, and you can see, see how all these colors have different values. This is very, very light. Uh, this blue is very dark, this is very dark, this orange is pretty light, um, red is quite dark, but you don't have to really worry about which colors you're using, because if, if you see up on the website, on Lesson 12, on PaintingCourse.com, uh, I have the two different Philip Burke photographs, those two illustrations, and you look in the first illustration and you can see a lot of the, the values in the shadows of the face, are actually greens and reds and it still works as an entire drawing because they're the right darknesses, they're the right values. So when you're painting you have to be more more uh, consistent with making your values and your colors correspond than you need to be about actually what color something is, right? That's the drawing aspect of painting. You have to you have to learn to see all these colors, you have to see them in black and white because that's how a painting works. You know, a red is not a red in space. A red is a certain darkness of a red, right? We don't just see red out of the tube all over the place. So, uh, the second way up is a value scale going up. This is quite easy. And we always have to clean our brush. After we go down, just add a little white. And you can see that you, you always mix besides a place different than where you're painting. 
can see this going up higher and higher. I mean, then this is just the easy stuff here. Going up with white. Up with white, down with the complementary color. That's it. So for assignment number 22, you're going to copy that entire value scale with all the different shades. So you've got two different assignments. First one is to make eight strips of value of color intensity, starting with the intense color, going to the least. And then the second is to copy this value scale, which I'll pop up on the screen there. And every single primary and secondary color. So, um, in this lesson you should have learned, just to recap everything, uh, how to identify opaque and transparent colors by looking at the little boxes on your tubes, um, why you want to use opaque colors instead of transparent colors. You should know what the primary colors are, red, yellow, blue. You should know what the secondary colors are, violet, orange, green, and you should know what complementary colors are, blue against orange, red against green, yellow against violet. And you should learn how to control color intensity, take your most intense color, add the complementary color, lowers the intensity, that also makes it darker without needing to use black, and you should be able to know how to control value, which I just showed you, also controls value besides intensity, and then of course adding white to the base color, one, two, three, four, going up the scale, higher and higher. So you're going to do the same scales with every one of these colors, violet, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Get started. Peace.